So hi, this is my first book review and it's going to be on Holes by Louise Sacca or Sacha. I'm going to say Sacca for the review, I don't actually know which one it is, I'm sorry. Um, when I'm doing this I don't actually have the internet so I couldn't even look it up, but yeah, shames. Um, so I love this book. Um, I did actually see the film first, so that kind of didn't prejudice me in a way, but it meant, you know, I couldn't have had the experience of reading the book first time without having, you know, absolutely no knowledge of it. Um, so I did already know what was going to happen, basically. Um, but nonetheless, like, I still wanted to read it, and I hadn't watched the film for a while, but I still remembered what happened. Um, and yet, when all the little twists and turns came, I still felt, you know, not like it was a surprise, but I still liked the way that they were told enough to make me say, like, you know, oh, I liked that, you know, the way all those little things linked up. Um, I don't know if if anyone who's watching this has read it or um, seen the film, but I think they're both equally good in their own right. I mean, me and my friend were talking about it earlier, and um, she actually prefers the book, whereas... I honestly I couldn't make a preference between the two. Um, I do I haven't seen it for a while, but I do remember really enjoying the film and enjoying the book. It's it felt like it was the same thing, but a completely new experience at the same time. Um, but regardless of that, like um, the book, I mean the characters just seem so well written. Like to be honest, actually from what I remember, even though I only finished it yesterday, um, doesn't say that much about the description of the main character, Stanley Yelnats, and yet I have a really strong picture of him in my mind. Maybe that is because I saw the film and that's given me a view, but I don't even know if it's the same one. I'll have to rewatch the film and see if he did look the same as how I pictured him. Um, and the same with uh, Zero as well. I had a really strong image of him in my mind. Um, but anyway, if you haven't read the book at all, it's basically about Stanley Yelnats, which is like his name both forward and backwards. Um, you know, he's from a family which has supposedly got a curse on it. They don't know whether to believe it or not. Um, but he gets arrested for something which he claims he is innocent for and gets sent to Camp Green Lake. And because his family's so poor, he decides to go just because he's never been to camp and he's always wanted to go. Um, turns out it's not much of a camp, and all they do there is dig holes. Um, and, you know, without giving too much away at all, it's... It's really clever, really, the way that um, Sakar brings everything to d together, because um, it's it's written like it'll go from one page about the present tense and and his time at Camp Green Lake, and then it will suddenly switch to in the past, which is kind of like the, a Wild West type era in America, and um, and you, it doesn't confuse you at all, even though there's there's no breaks in between it. It'll just be one page you'll be talking in the present and then it'll just go straight to the past. It's never um, or rarely ever a new chapter or, you know, of like little dots underneath and yet instantly you know that you're you're in the past. Um, mainly because of the characters' names and stuff, but even the first time it happens when you've never really heard about them, you still know where you are and what's happening. And I think that that's amazing to do that, you know, without confusing people. Um, yeah, so the interlinks with the past and the present are really good because it it all ties in together, and especially, I, I don't want to ruin it at all, but there's a particular line at the end um, where everything just comes together, and it's just really well-rounded, because throughout it there'd be lots of little coincidences, which, um, whilst I was reading, I just thought, like, oh, well, how? what are the odds of that happening there, but that happened there, and I know it's fiction, but I feel like you're stretching it, like with all these different things and all these people happen to knowing knowing each other, like all these generations of families all crossing paths at different times just to be united here at Camp Green Lake and part of me started to think like, oh it's getting a bit ridiculous now, um and a bit confusing. But but then it all linked up right at that that one sentence at the end, like near the end. And um and I really liked that and I thought it was okay to have all those coincidences and the fact that it is a children's book as well or a teen book or a young adult or not novel, whatever you want to call it. I mean I would just say children's book. <laughs> um, you know, I I think you can get away with it more whereas if if it was an adult's book, I'm not I know adults do read it, but I'm not sure it'd be as well accepted, which is annoying, but I guess that's why adults read children's books too, because they can get away with those things. Um yeah, it, it was really good. Um, I loved the, the villain in it as well. I'd love to have seen more of her really like being...
quite evil because um, I've forgotten her name. Oh, well, she's just called the Warden, really. That's how she's known. But I remember in the book, like I did have a vivid image of her. I'm sure she was a lot more malicious and she did a lot, a lot more evil things than in the book. It was pretty much just the one moment, and I wanted to see more of why the kids were so like the kids before um, Stanley shows up, like why they were so frightened of her, or you know, generally just why they didn't. Like we're worried that she'd be listening in and their conversations and things. So that was the one main thing that didn't come across. Also, at the very end of the book, don't worry, it's not going to give anything away. But the author actually points out the fact that he's going to leave a lot of questions unanswered. And it wasn't until that moment that you know I thought, well, you haven't even finished the book yet, and you're telling me there's going to be unanswered questions. And I finished it, and I don't even think there are any unanswered questions. There was there's maybe one thing that I thought, well, that didn't get really explained, but it's nothing to do with the the past and what's happened to them and how they all ended up in this situation. It's to do with the po prospect of the future of where they might go and develop. But that in any book, I never think that that's really what happens. It's always about what's happened to them in the past or what's happening there. I don't never think about where the character's going to go next. Maybe, maybe that's just me, but I think where the writer ends it, that's the end for me, unless he decides to do sequels. Which he has, actually. It's called Small Steps. And uh, Armpit and X-Ray are two of the other characters who share Stanley's... Um, they're in like Stanley's group that they get put in in Camp Green Lake. I haven't read it, and to be honest, I'm not sure I will. Um, even though I did really like Holes, I'm, I was interested in Stanley and Zero as characters. Um, you know, I thought the Warden was a really great character, I don't, but I don't particularly want to read more about her. I just wish she had been in it more. Um, and I wasn't really interested in the other kids. Like they, they were just sort of there. They, they didn't. I don't feel the need to find out more about them. You know, whereas I probably would have read another book about Zero and Stanley, um, but. You know, I, I don't really want to know about Armpit and X-Ray, but, you know, let me know, comment if you've read it and tell me if I should be reading it, because at the moment I just, maybe maybe one day if I come across it I'll read it, but I'm not going to go out to be looking for it. Um, but basically, I, I did really like this book. It's, it was a really good plot, apart, you know, apart from it did kind of go off at one point, and then, but like I said, that sentence really did bring it back. Um, the characters are so well written. Um... I do. I really think it's really different. It's one of those books that you feel should always be there. Something that is quite, quite a really good standard. I mean, there is a reason why it's on like the syllabus in schools. Um, you know, it's it's described by Philip Pullman here as unmistakably powerful, and it's it's really true. Um, so I definitely recommend it to everyone. And I, as I said before in the last video, I don't know if you saw that, but I haven't actually got a rating system set up yet, but. I think I will do one, and it's going to be four, like five out of five kind of system. I don't know what kind of symbols. Maybe it'll just be be stars. But this one will be like four and a half out of five, just because of the way it did go off a bit. That I was a bit. There's too many coincidences, and the other part um, about the question unanswered questions. I just didn't think that the right that the writer needed to point that out. You know, if I didn't have questions answered that's that's a complaint I could just say myself you know I, I don't think that you really need to point it out to the reader that there's not that they're not going to get an answer to it and um, whether you want people to know that you intended it to be that way I don't think it really matters um, it's just not something that needs to be said so um, yeah and also like I wasn't that keen on the cover but you know this is just from one publisher I'm sure that it's been published elsewhere that in a better form but yeah so that's my review of holes i do def definitely recommend that you read it because it is really good um and there's a lot of issues in it as well like more more so than i thought like watching the film it was just an enjoyable film and it was really good but um it didn't bring out any issues like there's a lot of race issues in the book which i was really surprised that i didn't think that that would be in there and um you know, it didn't. It didn't really teach me anything new, but I think that if I was younger, maybe, maybe I would have explored it more. And it definitely in class when people are reading it, I think it, it would definitely generate a lot of discussion about those issues, which I think is great. So, um, yeah. And also, I wish there was more of Kiss and Kate Barlow too, because I remember her in the film being really vivid as well. And she's just not in it as much for me. It doesn't say anything about all the, like you find out straight away that Kiss and Kate Barlow is. Um, 
with like a robber and basically just a wicked woman of the West going round and uh, robbing and murdering and then kissing people afterwards. And there just wasn't enough of her in the book compared to being in the film. I'm sure they actually had scenes of her in the film as she did that. And and in the book it was just sort of, yeah, she she wrote, she um, robs people and she murders them and that was it, but it wasn't really described. I wanted some really gritty, in-depth like description of what exactly she was doing to people, but there wasn't. But I still really enjoyed it and it's definitely a good book, so please pick it up, check it out and read it. Okay, thanks guys.